Welcome everyone to Loud and Proud Orlando. We are live. We're about seven people live. Thank you so much for being uh, uh, here with us. Um, thank you for your support always. Uh, make sure you drop us a thumbs up. Also subscribe to our channel, uh, Loud and Proud Orlando on uh, YouTube, as well as if you're listening to us on any audio form, uh, Spotify or Apple Podcasts, uh, thank you so much. Drop us a review. Uh, five star, four star, whatever you feel. Click on the notification bell. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for your support. Um, you know, we got the season grades today. Um, we're going to rate our players. We're also going to be comparing um, what were our predictions. I think we were very wrong in a, in a couple of them. Some of them a little right, you know, some of them a little very wrong. You know, we, we thought some players were going to have a. Uh, the spotlight this season and unfortunately uh we saw uh, other players uh like dagger dan for example like uh, take it to you, you take it up a notch and uh you know we'll, we'll develop on all of that also this is massive news for for orlando city for orlando as a soccer country the oldest tournament nation tournament in the world copa america it's going to be held in orlando as well so we're, we're going to be one of the host cities of the Copa America. Why is it so huge? Because if you do a fantastic job hosting Copa America, you pretty much open yourself up and make a case for Orlando to be a soccer city. Uh, um, you know, if we want to show FIFA what we could do, this is our chance right here. Um we're going to talk about the groups. We're going to talk about the groups. Uh, the actual drawing, it's going to be on December 7th, so this weekend. But uh, we already kind of know which venues, uh, you, know, you know, they're going to be hosting and uh, what can Team USA get and what people are saying online of what Team USA, uh, you know, wants uh, in their group, you know. Same with Mexico, with Jamaica, with Canada. And we'll talk about some of the uh, South American countries that are also going to be there as well. Uh, Ramiro Enrique also was called up for the under-23 um, Argentinian national team. So that's huge news as well. And uh, we'll talk about all of that and more. Uh, John, how are you, my friend? Good evening. Good, man. Yeah, can't complain. Just... Um... Excited to review the season and a whole more and uh, think about next year and waiting eagerly for some kind of news about roster decisions or, you know, managerial decisions. Um, we, we think things are happening. It's been reported by some people that things are happening, but nothing official yet. So we wait with bated breath, Luis, as you would say. Correct. Correct. How are you, Paola? Welcome Doing back. awesome. I could be uh, better if I saw Orlando City play it on Saturday, but um, <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Happy uh, to be back with you guys. Great, great. Uh, I'm watching a lot more Premier League. I'll say that, Luis. Right? You know. Yeah. I haven't got I haven't got my MLS soccer fix anymore, so I gotta. Uh, no. I gotta go back and you know, of, uh... watch get my soccer for some else elsewhere for a while. <laughs> Yeah, I saw the Barcelona Atletico uh, match. Barcelona Atletico, well, one nil win uh, from full, from Barcelona. Uh, Joao Felix doing the Messi, the Messi celebration, right? Uh, but you know, we'll talk about all of that and more. Um, we'll gear up for closing the season. Uh, we're gonna do it in a with the season grades. So you want me to share the share the spreadsheet or? How do, you, how do you want to start, John? Well, that's a for, for the predictions. We don't have anything to do with the grades on there. So um, we could do the grades first and then predictions. Sure. Yeah, let's do the grades first. All right. You want to just pull up like a squad view? Yeah, sure. Go down. Yeah, let me. Some players I didn't grade, you know, like I wasn't going to grade Abdi Salim off his like <laughs> well, one, we, one we, game that he played. We thought think, that, that, or, that he was going to have more minutes, right? Hey, I mean, these guys are in the squad for MLS, right? You know, like Rivera didn't really hit the field for Orlando City. Lola barely touched the field, right? So I didn't give a lot of those guys grades, but if you played enough minutes, I feel like you're an MLS guy, then you got a grade. 
So we got it right here. Uh, let me. There's a squad right there. All right. Thank you, Transfer Market. Appreciate that. All right. So uh, we saw Mason, right? You know, we, we want to start with the goalkeepers. We're going to start with Pedro. Who wants to who wants to start with Pedro? I'll go last. Uh, John, you want to go? <laughs> why? Because Remember, of you, know, you should go first. You know the most about first. Pedro. Okay, yeah, that's go fine. First, go first. So from one to ten. Well, no, I did a A, a B, C, you know, like as if you're in school, like a oh, school grade. Oh, okay. You could have like B plus, right, B minus. To me, you know, I'm up with the pluses and minuses. Pedro Alese, A, a solid A, solid. Not plus, not minus, just a solid A. I think uh, his season's been tremendous. I think, uh, I mean, without him, I mean, you take him out, we lose a very important player in our squad, and uh, he's always been very consistent. Obviously, people are gonna say, "Hey, you know, you know, he he could have done a little better in, in the in the." <laughs> In the semifinal, you know, conference semifinal, he could have done a little better, you know, but he had five saves on that match. And uh, we we could have opened Pandora's box if Columbus would have scored and this would have ended up 3-0, three, three right, uh, or 4-0. I mean, it, it would have been a very embarrassing way to end our playoff run. So uh, I think in Pedro we trust, man. He's he's a cornerstone of our of our of our um of our club of of our organization. Uh, and one thing I do have to say though, Pedro, aprende el inglés, papá. You have to learn a little more. You gotta learn a little more English, my friend. You know, for three years you can even say like hola. Yep. Come on, man. You can even say hello. Come on. Other than that, uh, I would say uh, a solid A. That's this is my opinion. I think um, uh, it kind of sucks that he was not uh, chosen to be, you know, goalkeeper of the year. But I mean, in front of him, you know, the stats count, right? He plays. He plays overseas. You know, he plays with his team, with his um, with his national team, and he's away uh, many weeks. And you know, that that is. That doesn't look well on the stats, right? Compared to Berkey or Celentano and all those other um, keepers from the league. So, but other than that, I think Pedro is, uh, I think one of the best players in the in the team. What about you, John? There you go. Yeah, I said uh, A minus. A minus. There you go. Yeah, I feel yeah. like he definitely there's there's moments that you know he doesn't perhaps do the best save, or you know there's a moment here or there that. He maybe could, I think, do a little better. Um, maybe a lapse of concentration sometimes, but 95% of the time, he's a, a top class MLS goalkeeper. So, yeah, A minus for Pedro. What about you, Paola? I will say A plus. Right. Um, I think this has been Pedro Galese's best year with Orlando City. Um, Yes, I agree, John, that he had some hiccups, right? And especially, uh, I think it was Columbus Crew game, not the this past one, the the previous one, that the ball went through his arm. It, it was Columbus Crew? I don't remember. Um, but I think this is the best season for, for uh, Pedro Gales, and hopefully for next season, he could turn it up a notch. Get better and better, hopefully. So, um, do you think, uh, Luis, that we have seen his peak, or because I'm afraid this is this is my this is my theory with goalkeepers. They could have a peak and then go down, and I don't want that for for Pedro Galese. No, I think um, I think he's been performing well. I think I mean he's Pedro. I think he's a very young keeper for. I mean keepers. Buffon, uh, you know, did his thing until he was like 40-something. I think he's still doing his thing. Uh, so uh, Pedro, uh, he is uh, 33 years old, still pretty young for a goalkeeper. Uh, he stayed very fit. 
uh, he's maybe not the biggest goalkeeper, right? Um, you know, and that's one of the reasons why you don't, and I, I know this is going to sound really wrong. That's why one of the reasons why you don't see him in Europe, because in Europe, uh, you're looking for a taller goalkeeper. Um, now, um, I don't think he's reached his peak. All I can say is he needs, he has, he's a leader in Orlando City and he's a leader in Peru. And I'm afraid the way things in his national team are right now, very chaotic um, from being a top 20 team in the, in the world in, in the FIFA rankings going down to almost 37 spot. Uh, it's a huge dip. Um, it's looking really glim for Peru next year is Copa America. So he's going to want to do really great at that. And that may, I don't know if that may affect his playability for next year. Uh, it could be, I mean, um, uh, it, it could be um, now, especially because it's in his, home turf right in the united states you know he he's gonna he's gonna have a lot of eyes uh you know they're gonna watch him and if, you know and uh, i think that could be you know a little bit what i'm kind of worried is that i mean if he was away out for a while and people complained about him being away because of national duty this year next year it's probably going to be worst <laughs> so um that's where mason comes into 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 you know we we, we really see uh a little of mason's tedohar right john yeah i mean we didn't see much of him um i dropped my pen i gave him a b you gave uh adam uh mason a b yeah yeah, I think he. I, I think I'll he did give him solid, a, but nothing incredible when he came in. You know, just a, a B. Yeah, when it comes to to Mason, um, I would I would say I I give him a, I, I give him a B as well. I mean, uh, I don't. I, there's gonna be games that he's gonna have to step up, and the games that he has played, um, he has done a, a great job. Um, again, you know. Um, he sometimes maybe the way he's um he's positioning himself uh on the field sometimes it may be a little confusing in some plays especially in set pieces but other than that i mean he's really not underperformed um at all so what about you paula i gave him a b as well he had only okay. one clean sheet um six uh goals conceded so i Solid B. So, uh, what does the people that are we're here about are almost ten people watching? Um, drop us your your how will you rank? We're gonna read um, we're gonna read your comments right now. Um, so Mason Staduhar, um, John, give him a B. Paula, give give him a B, and I give him a B. A boo, 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 boo. a triple B. It's not the Better Business Bureau, guys. It's uh, it's just a, it's just the ratings for for Mason Staduhar. Uh, Joshua Tall, I'm looking forward to hearing the news and the rumors you tell us about tonight. Also, hopefully, we find out about Oscar Pereja, Musi, and Ricardo News soon. We should have some news fairly soon. Um, you know, we'll talk about that. I agree with Luis about Pedro. Thank you so much, Joshua. Solid B, says J JC Beast. Uh, Jonathan Rittner, uh, thank you so much. He says, um, Pedro, A minus, Mason, B minus. There you go. Pedro, a solid A, says JCB's 95. Yeah, so, you know, we're going to see more of Mason next season, in my opinion. I think we're going to see a little bit more of Mason next season because Pedro's going to have a lot of international duty uh, to do. And Peru has not been able yet to no, – number one, Peru right now doesn't even know if they have a coach. We'll talk about it a little later. So, um, so um, Adam Grinwis. We haven't seen. Uh, him yeah, I didn't give him. Do one we? Do we need to fight. score him? <laughs> no. D and F fail. No, I'm just kidding. No, no F. Just Javier Otero. Not apply based on OCB. Based on OCB, I think yeah, like a. I'll a give B. him a. 
for him and A, he did pretty well. In this yeah, season. he did pretty well. I think I think because and he's been noticed some mistakes, by uh, the well, national that's, team. That's Venezuela. to be expected from a young goalkeeper. Yeah, I think I give him. A, I think I give him a, for OCB. I give him an A. What about you, Paula? I will give him a B plus. Okay, B plus. You know, I like the fact that you know the the, the young kid's being noticed. Um, he's being noticed. Uh, um, by his national team, uh, the actual um, senior team. So, you know, he's going to be probably called up for the under-23 um, team squad for Venezuela, you know. Um, so it's going to be it's gonna, it's gonna be a, a huge opportunity. Um, so let's see. Um, all right. Cool. All right. So. Rodri. Rodri. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. oh man <laughs> look uh, i'll go first i gave rodri a b oh man because i, I think overall he had a very good season but just yeah there's times where he 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 went back to his old ways <laughs> and so he, he grew but then it was frustrating because like in the final, there's moments where he's just doing stuff he doesn't need to be doing. So for that reason, he had games where he was an A plus player, though, right? He had games where he was the best player on the field for us. So I think incredible growth this year, but but also frustrating at times from from Schlegel. What about you, Paula? I gave him a B too. It's he's like a roller coaster ride, like. He was solid, then goes down, then goes up. <laughs> it's an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> an emotional roller coaster. And, but he's like going to it's a risky business. Exactly. And then he put that cherry on top on that last game. So that's why I put him on B. Last season, I would have said, not last season, the season before last, I would have I would have given him a C minus. Honestly. This season, he hasn't spoken once. He's been like very quiet um, with media, with you know. But I believe he's exceeded all expectations. I agree with John in a way that he's been one of. Uh, without him and AC being injured, we would have been screwed. So uh, definitely, I will say a B plus because of his improvement. Now. He he's he needs to he needs to do better. I mean, uh, I I believe that he's a solid backup. I don't. I still believe that he's not a starter. I think uh, Orlando City needs to have another AC in his prime uh, with Robin Jensen. Even though Robin Jensen hinted pretty much that he's he's staying already. So. Um, you know, we need someone for for um for I think Robin. for a minute they were considering next season putting Schlegel in there as the starting guy. You know, uh, I don't I, I think don't know. he I think Oscar was like letting him try to earn that job next season. Sure or protecting I, I think yeah, I think you're sure. right though. I think he showed that it's sure but maybe just a step too far for him. With with Carlos Hill, look look with the games that we've lost. Against against uh, against the teams that have a key player like Carlos Hill, like Diego Rossi, like uh, several other players, and I can name them. He's had some issues, uh, and it's because it's just his stamina. His he's just uh, it's just the way he plays. You know, it's just technically he gets overpowered and. I think he's better to be more of like, um, you know, I'm staying in my area, I'm staying in my domain type of center back. You know what I mean? He's not a center back that wants to kind of go all the way up to the mid, kind of like Antonio Carlos. Like, I wouldn't honestly trust. Um, I mean, even though he's done that this season, I would I would not um, advise him to, to do this very often because if he loses the ball, Trust me, uh, if it's, you know, it could be any other player, he, he ain't going to catch him. He ain't going to catch a, <laughs> no one. You know, he's very slow coming back. That's what I'm trying to say. So, 
even though he has improved tremendously this season, I believe that um, he's still yet not a starting center back, in my opinion. So, um, okay. So, are we going to be talking about AC? Yeah. Because I, I, I'm going to give AC uh, a C minus. Ooh, yeah. I'm I, was, get, I was thinking I about a C plus. A C. I gave yeah. him a C. I mean, if I can give him a D, I give, I give him the D. Really? You can give him a D if you want. Look, because he was not. He, I mean, it, hey. now, now, now thinking, thinking back at it, the season before last, I'll say he was fantastic. I mean, top, top, top level center back in the in the MLS. This season, he he was. He was he 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 was great uh, in a couple of games. He got injured. The injuries kind of didn't play a a good role. Uh, uh, they they played a, of high importance uh, in in his performance. Definitely uh, affected the you know his performance. But I would say that uh, mentally he was never in the MLS. Mentally he was thinking, I want to leave. You know. I will agree. I will agree. And Even and maybe, before yeah. the season started, and, and, he and was maybe, late. And maybe Oscar noticed that. And he, you know, because when he was ready and he was fit to play, why Oscar didn't put him as a starter? I, I think partly that. I think also partly that yeah, he's leaving. He just wasn't really like Matt Sharp either, right? Like when he did come in, I wasn't like, oh, look, there's incredible Antonio Carlos, like that we remember, you know? I feel like, I think you're right, Luis. I think he, after the injury yeah. early on in the season, put him out. He was sort of like, okay, I'm like definitely want to leave at the end of the season. So it's sort of like ride out the last six months. Probably won't get to play. Maybe I'll get back in the team. But, you know, he probably didn't push himself that hard to try to get back in the team is what we're saying. Because he yeah. wasn't like, oh, I got to earn my place back for next year. He was just like, well, I'm not going to be here anyway. Kind of thing. Did you notice how, how, how Orlando didn't put him in any flyer? Didn't put him in, in in any in any you know Orlando City you know nothing. I mean, Usually I def- he was one I of the top. I definitely noticed that was yeah. He's he he went from being you know a star center back for us to a guy yeah. that we almost forgot about at times this year. Yeah, he was. Um, yeah, I mean, he was big, he was pushed a lot. And, 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 I'm, and, and I'm witness that he was pushed a lot. It was Pedro, um, Facundo, obviously, and then it was AC. Robin, like they all, they are, they are the ones who always kind of like captains of the team. Now, and I he, think if he does go, it's a shame for him to have his last season with us like that because arguably he's one of our best center backs ever to play for Orlando City. Probably the best center back. Going from, uh, probably, probably Jansen, maybe this season is overtaking him as the better no, he's, center back he's, of the he's two. One of the best, perhaps like Jansen could. Could stay with us another few years and uh-huh. put more on his legacy, I think, than AC will. So, uh, arguably, yeah, up there is top three center backs of Orlando City history in MLS. Of, of course, I agree. You know, for he, 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 I think he identifies the moniker forever a lion perfectly. I mean, those moments where he would, you know, of do course, all that purple, and purple. slap the chest and purple and yeah, yeah of course. You know, we'll never I mean, we're talking that. like it's a done deal. It's not a done deal, everybody, but we mentally right. it but seems he's, very he's, done he's, to us because it's been we've been talking about it for so long <laughs> and it's reported from Brazil, et cetera, et cetera. So we're we're I mean, what would you say, Luis? Like you're pretty sure it's gonna happen. We're we're pretty sure about that. Paula, what about you? I gave him a solid C, and you're right, Luis. Like he was late. If you think about AC, um performance this year he was late to join the team in the beginning of the season that's a one red flag right there secondly i think after that injury where he got um i think he's uh i don't remember um hamstring with against lafc last season i think since then he has not been the same to be honest and then i didn't see his passion his purple moments this season, like he mentally checked out a while ago. That's why probably to your point, John, Oscar Pareja didn't put him 
on because probably protecting him to not be injured again so he can be well prepared for the next team and put Schlegel on. So I said it's a C, solid C for me. Uh, VW Hutch Schlegel had a run of solid performances until he didn't. I agree. E Tromic, we relied on Schlegel way too much more than we were expecting. Correct. This is because of AC. That's because of AC. Joshua Tall, we will probably will have to get a new left back if Petrasso doesn't come back. I definitely think we should keep Santos, though. I think we're going to keep Santos. Uh, Joshua Tall, yep, I agree. Why did Oscar not put AC as a starter when he came back from injury? And I agree with you, Luis, about AC. AC is one of our best center backs. That's also great that Jensen hinted he's staying. Yeah, yeah, he's he said he's yeah he looks like he's staying. a lot of people are staying in in Orlando. Don't know, you know. Some people well, already jumped the gun and said, you know, I believe um, you know, if they don't win the MLS championship, if we don't win the MLS championship, uh, everyone's leaving. Uh, that's not true. We, we don't know unless. That person uh, is part of the Wolf family. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he probably knows something I don't know. But, you know, go ahead, Speaking John. Speaking of Jensen, yep. um, if I could give him more than an A+, plus, I would. Yeah, I'll give him uh, a star. Like Mario. Uh, yeah, well, should we A star him? I feel like he deserves <laughs> a, star. a star. There we go. A, a plus, star, plus. buddy. A plus plus. Like a plus account. plus. A star for Jensen. Um, what a player, man! I'm trying to think of something negative to say about the guy this year. No, I, nothing. I'm struggling. I was worried about his speed going off last year, and it seems like he stepped it up a gear somehow at the age of 32. So, uh, we just gotta hope he stays and and is here next year because he's such a uh, he's become like the beating heart of this team in lots of ways, you know. So, what rating do you give Paula? A plus for Jensen. Yeah, I mean, he's to me, he's he's been uh, one of the best players uh, of the team overall. Um, a cornerstone in our back line, leadership, the way he took over all the interviews for the team. I, you know, uh, always, yeah, I'm a, I'm a little tired, but let me talk to media. You know what I mean? Like, you got to appreciate uh, that. You know, I think it was him and Mauricio, literally the the people that media spoke the most this year. So um, definitely, and not only that, the way he played, rallied the team together. Um, it, it's it's something to definitely, uh, you know, not you know, we we'll definitely have to renew him. I mean, he's very he's a very important part of our of our team. I think he's going to stay, in my opinion. So um, I'm just – I'll give him a Mario star. You know, it just goes above it, <laughs> everything. So anyways, uh, let's read some comments real quick. Seriously, uh, what were we saving AC for? An even more important game? Well, I just feel VW Hutch, he wasn't mentally there. I mean, think about it. You get injured, you spend a lot of time with your family. And you discuss, okay, have I I already won a championship with Orlando? I I already did it in a way. You know what I mean? I already, you know, what what I came to Orlando for, you know, and, and these guys are actually holding the fort better without me. So probably he felt, hey, you know, let me talk to my agent. Let's see what options are out there. And uh they he just loves brazil and he wants to go back home you know i i don't i don't blame it at, at that point but i feel like in such important matches in which you need everybody to be gung-ho mm -hmm. which is the playoffs you need someone that's present mentally because you know and so maybe oscar felt okay well rodrigo he's the wear you know the wear and, uh, and tear of, of of the squad in the back line I'm I'm gonna and he betted for Rodrigo. You know, he decided to give him a chance over AC because it's what's been working for the last the for the last, for the last uh, season. So um, I I feel like that's probably why. You know, a, a lot of a lot of coaches do that um, everywhere in the world. You know, um, you know, you don't 
You know, you don't you're not gonna see a player that's gonna leave uh, you know um you know probably play as a starter in a final, you know what I mean? If you know he's gonna leave, aside if it's Messi or M- Mbappe, obviously. But I'm talking about a player like in the back line, like you know, if he if you know he's gonna leave, you're gonna probably gonna see his substitute play instead of him. It, it, it's just part of the game. Well, do you agree, John? Yeah, definitely. I agree with that. Now, um, now we're gonna rate the overall back line. It says JCBs. How would you rate rate the overall back line this season? Uh, I think you know, based on how high we were in defensive numbers, like you know, shutouts and less goals, and just overall that second half of the season is very difficult for teams to score on us. I would say we're we're sort of like a a minus on the defensive side for me. I think we're we're in an A level defense in in MLS, right? If you're saying that so a team like Columbus probably has a C or a B level defense, and a team like Nashville maybe has like an A level defense, I think we would also have an A level defense. Yeah, I mean, look, um, thirteen clean sheets this season. Um, from my understanding, um, you know, f- 41 goals against is what the defense had. So, um, hold on, let me double check. Is it is this is, is this right? Hold on. Let me see. Yeah. This, yeah. It's right. Yeah. 41. So we're the six best defense in the MLS, according to the stats. You got Nashville number one with 34 goals against, 11 clean sheets. Um, I don't know if this is accurate. Hold on. Yeah, I mean, it, it says 2023 here. So that's, that's what I'm looking at right now. Yeah, so Nashville number one, Seattle number two, New York number three. Uh, that seems, the, you know, ne- with only nine clean sheets. LAFC which probably they're going to win it, uh, Dallas, and then Orlando. That's what it shows here. Uh, I will give them, to me, a honestly, uh, an A. You know, I think uh, they've, they've, they've excelled. I mean, look, having Petrasso down, seeing the progress, uh, number one, praises for Pareja and for, and for his staff to – find Dagger Dan a spot in the back line. I mean, I think that was the most important part they've done this season when it came to the back line. We already know what Rodrigo will give us. We already knew what Robin would give us. Uh, you already know what Kyle will give us. And by adding Dagger there, it really made a difference um, for the back line. And uh, also the way they... I mean, coming from a, and I, I know this is going to sound really bad, but Rafa Santos in Brazil was a nobody, man. To be honest with you. He had a few minutes in his squad in, in Cruzeiro. No one really, not, I mean, he was there passing out the Gatorade. Hey, man, you want, you want some Gatorade? Yeah. And then he comes here to, to the United States to the MLS and boom, shakalaka. It's another player. They made it into, and this is constant with Oscar. And people don't realize this. This is constant with Oscar. He's able to take a player that is is really good tactically and follows direction very well and pushes him up. You know, makes makes his game a little bigger. And that's what happened. That was, it's been, and also his health. He, uh, he barely got injured, Rafa Santos. So we barely noticed. Petrasso or anybody else, you know, that wasn't there. So, with all with all those issues and them being able to find uh, a way to come back, I gave uh, I gave the backline an, an A. What about you, Paula? I cannot get on mute. Uh, minus A, like a ninety percent for the backline. And you're right, Luis. Like we had to experiment with dagger dan he came in struggle a little bit but it was it was fine because that's not his natural position so um because of those circumstances i will give them a 
minus a. 90%, let's say. Okay, so Paula A minus. And you, John, were A minus, right? Yep. Who are we going with next? Uh, yeah, Picasso? sorry. I, 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 was, I was typing a, a banner so, I, so people good. could see uh, um, what we picked. Patrasso, I think, is probably next. I mean, we don't need to get Thomas Williams or Abdi Salim once. Well, I mean, honestly, did we see Thomas Williams or Abdi Salim this season? We saw Abdi Salim in like one or two games <laughs> at the beginning of the season, and that was it. But that was just because of injuries to both Ganson and, you know. I mean, I'll be honest with you. We need, to, we need to find, and I think one of, this is one of the reasons that we need to definitely find if it's not an OCB, uh, make them play League's Cup. I mean, we got to find a cup for them, for them to shine. I mean, these are two really good players that we just were underutilizing them completely. <laughs> what if we've had a Thomas would have had like four games on him and, and maybe he would have been a little bit more speedy than. Maybe he had a great game in, in a vital game that we needed, right? So I think we need to find a way to to plug him in if if we're, you know, we can just not use him, right? I don't know. What what are your thoughts there, John? On Abdi Salim? On, on both. Thomas Williams uh, and Abdi Salim. I don't think you're going to see either of them in the first team anytime soon, sadly. So you think you're going to go back? I to think OCB? center backs is just something like if Oscar's here, I see no evidence of him wanting anybody in center back who isn't like somewhat experienced or he doesn't even like playing rookie right backs or left backs. Like I love Oscar, I but he very, I see zero intention for him to like move forward. Like some of these guys and, and Abdi Salim, arguably the guy, you know, should be given a chance. Kevin Gucci, maybe, you know, is up there. Yeah, Kevin Gucci, a definitely. Um, and, like, we had all these injuries this year, and I thought, surely, at some point, they're going to bring back Abdi or bring up somebody like Kubu Kibu um, and give them a shot. And I, I, we just rode it out with three center backs all season, which is crazy to me. I, I, the whole season, I said, the beginning of the season, in preseason, I said, we need another center back. The whole season, I was like, there's three center backs. It's we got away with it, but we were close. Remember several times, Luis, we talked about on the pod about like what happens this week if we get an injury to this guy or this guy gets another yellow card and he's suspended. You know, if we had that scenario where you only got Robin Jansen and it would have been Kyle Smith, right? Or would Oscar have gone for an Abdi Salim in that scenario or Kevin Gucci? I don't think so. I think you more likely would have seen you know, Wilder play center back. Maybe than, Kyle. And him pull up a guy from. So I think, you know, these guys, I see no evidence of them, them being promoted. Maybe some attackers next year, but defense, it seems very hard to, to move up into the first team. What about you, Paula? I didn't, like, I agree with John. I don't understand why Oscar Pareja doesn't like to put defensive rookies and. I'm surprised that he put Duncan McGuire this this season. And surprise, it, it was not no brainer. He started scoring. Let's put the guy. But like Wilfredo Rivera, that's a, I have never seen him um, minutes with the MLS. I only see saw him. I think it was Arsenal that he went in in that friendly, and that's it. So I I don't know what is the criteria that Oscar Pareja wants for those rookies. But if you don't give them minutes they won't develop with the first squad. So that's that's my like that's my opinion. But um I know that they play a lot in, in OCB, but at the same time they need to give them minutes with the first squad so they can step up. And like there's one of these guys maybe could have competed with Schlegel for that spot at some point if they'd have had some minutes. Like if yeah. they were actually in the if you, like Paulo says if they never get any minutes, how are they ever gonna develop into a guy who could like Mikey Halliday is the only one that has kind of got enough minutes in this season. He was going to develop, but he got set back by some injuries. He's the only one I've ever seen that's really come through and actually like, maybe, why do you think that is maybe become a, a squad player? 
Why do you think that is, Jim? I, I don't know because Oscar is an academy guy. They're the developing the academy. Team. There's guys down there. Maybe they just don't think any of these guys at OCB have got what it takes to be a <laughs> asset in MLS. It's hard to say, Luis. I think if Jack Lynn is not promoted next season and played, you know, a certain amount of time, I think I think that it's what else have you got to do, right? If you score that many goals, like in two years in a row, he's done very well in that league. So I think that justifies enough to get real minutes in MLS next year. I'm not saying start the guy, but he should be coming off the bench in a lot of games. He should be used like Enrique was used as a real squad player, right? Um, if that doesn't happen, then I don't know what else you, you got to do on OCB to get promoted up into the first team, really. And I think Mike, uh, Mikey Holiday went in because we – we transferred wrong to DC. So who we got left when we did that? We Mikey didn't bring Holiday. anybody up. Yeah. Exactly. We, and we didn't bring anybody on the off season. So I think that was the moment for him. Hey, step up or you're going to be bench technically. And he got bench after that injury against the Sounders because of that freaking pitch. But um, I mean, that's a great question to us, Oscar. And, and just for curiosity, like, hey, what is the criteria from being a an academy player or a rookie player defensively to put me in? Like, what what do I need to impress you to put me into an MLS game with the first squad? But even with the MLS guys, like he lost faith in Petrasso at left back, right? Well, we just saw that, that he didn't too. want to play Petrasso anymore. So it seems like Oscar decides if you're not solid enough for me in defense, I just don't want to play you. And they'll play another guy who's out of Look, position over you. Eventually, all those players that you mentioned have to have some self self love or confidence in themselves to take their talent somewhere else. See, they feel like they're not getting enough minutes, and that's eventually what I believe is going to happen. You know, th somebody like Thomas Williams that it's been in the U.S. Uh, men's national youth nat national team. I mean, he's only uh, nineteen. Oh, right. It's, it's so like I, I don't know. I don't know if Thomas is going to leave, but eventually, if 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 he figures out that he's 21 and he's still in OCB, he's going to probably say, "Hey, you know, maybe I get a little, maybe I, I get paid a little less at DC United, but DC United is going to put me as a starter." Hell yeah, you know. At that point, it's their decision. Uh, you know, uh, Abdi Salim, he plays for the national team of Somalia. Obviously, you have to understand uh, he's a national team player playing second division in, in, in a country like the U.S. Now, obviously, Somalia is not the biggest national team either, uh, but, you know, he's a national team player. So it means that he's competed with other African nations. So and African nations are no joke. Uh, they, they know how to play the sport very well. So um, and. Again, you know, I feel like, like you said, John, you know, I feel like, you know, maybe the the, the message here is if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. Let's use what we already know it's going to work uh, because we have all these expectations uh, this, this season to win it all. Or, you know, I want to be able to not to people start saying puppy out. So I'm going to just put my voice, you know, type of message. And uh, and I think that's probably what he did. And in a way, his boys paid off. Kyle Smith, uh, Rodrigo, you know, I mean, we 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 were second in the standings, you know, you know, so right below Cincinnati. So the back line was working fine. There was no need to, to bring them in this season. So. Uh, so we go to Luca Petrasso. I haven't seen him. Me. I haven't seen him uh, very much. I'll give him. A, I'll give him a C. Yeah, I give him a C. Are oh, you giving him a C? I give him a B. Yeah. yeah. So let's read some comments real quick. Uh, how would you know? Um, what center back do you think OC should go after? If you have any in mind, also hopefully OC finds a good replacement alongside Jansen. Um, oof, that's a, an important question. Um, I want a top center back in the league. 
I, I think Orlando has the money to look at the the stats of who's the top three center back in the MLS and open the wallet and try to convince them to come to Orlando. <laughs> and if you ask me who do I want, I want Walker Zimmerman. I don't think we're going to get a Walker Zimmerman, but I want a Walker Zimmerman type player like i want an american right. preferably but that's sort of like experienced center back not that old but would be like one of the top center backs in the league to to pair with jansen to give us like a really solid center back pairing back there um and it would be nice to have somebody with some league experience but i don't think they necessarily have to in that position i think you can go out and bring somebody from europe who's still young enough maybe like a 28 29 30 year old from europe who's got a lot of experience and uh, it's still got some legs on them and could be a, a good partner to Jensen. Who that is, I don't know, but that's the kind of player I would like to sign. Maybe even a, a DP center back signing. I would I would love to see that. Like really. Yeah, that's cash. that's what I would like too, for sure. Yeah. What about you, yeah. Paula? Um, I th to be honest, and don't kill me for this comment, but I think Walker Zimmerman is kind of overrated in my in my opinion. But mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that's okay. Um, okay. I mean, I will like an Antonio Carlos. He definitely wasn't as good this season, Paul. I'll say that. And, yeah, yeah, he yeah. wasn't. Yeah, he wasn't the usual Walker Zimmerman self. This Normally, season, like, right. and that's why I was like. I would uh, also say like a Miazga type, like correct. Then he brought in Miazga. That's like you're a, a, like American. A, like you're not incredible, but you're right. like a top level center back. How many US. minutes Miazga got at Chelsea? Not many. Uh, I mean, he he was like Five. loaned out by Chelsea a gajillion That's times. But there are boy. players like that. Five there, minutes. There's there are American U.S. center backs around you know Europe that are some are playing, some are not, some are you know. Or they might, I would be tempted to come back to MLS for the right amount of money. Or do the St. Louis grab the Bundesliga two yep, top, yep, top yeah. five I center backs? I'm fine with that. I think a German right. center back you know, will always take exactly, a German center right? back, man. They know you, how to defend. Right. You go grab the Bundesliga two top five center backs in, in Bundesliga two with the best stats. And then Orlando can go and send Moreira flying out with a, you know, tweet some schnitzel, go over there, drink some beer, land into Germany. Guten Tag. No? And then uh, go and, and, and grab one of those guys. Bundesliga 2 is a great league. You know? Uh, but I, I think I agree with John. That's the that type case. of player we need. I want a, a rough housing center back. You know what I mean? A center back that you look at him and you're like, yo. Like, like Kucha Hernandez would be petrified to see, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, like a center there's also someone like with some speed because if we're keeping yeah. Jansen, we need someone to cover back exactly. in behind when the ball breaks. You know, like Jansen's good, but he's, he's getting yeah. he's not going to be able to keep up the pace that he did this year, I think, forever. Yeah, you know? I agree. Now, let's go for Rafael Santos. It, to me, Rafael Santos, uh, to be honest with you, I'll give him an A plus because of his story mainly coming from brazil being a nobody and i'm not saying it in a bad way he was benched in crusado not in the times that he came into play no one noticed he comes to pareja pareja says okay this is the guy i got okay uh and then in true in true Oscar Pereja fashion, him and his coaching team uh, pushed him in a level that he probably doesn't believe that he's playing at this level uh, for MLS. So um, a very important player for Orlando City this season, Rafael Santos. Um, uh, there's things to improve, I agree, you know, but I think um, for – How's he come and how's developed in the league? I think he's done a tremendous job in a fast in fast time too. So he's done it really quick uh, compared to to other players uh, from South America. You know, um, I don't know what are your thoughts there, John. Uh, what's your rating there? Uh, I gave him an A minus, but only the minus because of that first beginning part of the season where right. he just 
looked very off the pace and, and and then almost at the end of the season as well he i don't think he was as effective in the in the playoffs and uh i don't i don't you know overall i think he is a top left back for us and i think he's a very solid left back for this league just an all-around you know proven now that he's a, he's a good mls player and i think next season we will feel comfortable putting him in that left back position and knowing that you know he's he's a starter and we're, we're happy with that. And maybe we'll have to bring in a, a sub behind Petrasso, depending on you know, whether he's here or not. But I would be very surprised if Santos is not our starting left back next season. What about you, Paula? Same as John, I give him a, a minus and it's because of that. Um, and I think it's just coming to a new league. And um, like you said, Luis, like if he was bench, and not getting minutes and moving to a new country is going to be rough in the first months. So, but he pulled it off. He, I remember like today, he pulled it off in that May 20 against Miami. That was his woke up call. Like, okay, let's, let me do an assist. Let me do a goal. And after that, like he felt confident and I'm, I feel confident that next season he's going to be better than this season. Like John said, um he's already mls experience i think probably go cold feet in the playoff probably is that i don't know but for me it's a minus a you know um yeah i mean honestly i think he's done a tremendous job uh rafa santos the season i'm looking forward to for him to definitely improve uh even better his performance this season coming up so this upcoming season so hopefully you know he he defies all expectations let's read some comments here joshua tall hopefully oc can open the wallet and get some really good young players that we target okay um so we'll go for um kyle smith Kyle Smith, I honestly, I'm going to give him a, hmm. I'll go with a B. Yeah. You go with a B, Paula? Well, I'm, I'm going to go with a, I'll go with a B. I'll go with a B as well. I mean, also his story is very, I mean, he, he definitely should write a book just like, uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy Chris who left to, to Scotland, the Chris Mueller. He, he, he should have wrote the accountant the accountant story or something like that <laughs> you know i mean coming from usl man to scoring some historic goals for orlando city in the mls i mean he's definitely i mean kyle smith in 10 10 years from now we're going to remember kyle smith as a legend he's definitely a legend in his own way i yeah. will say that yeah not necessarily our best player but like a fan and dear no, sort of been he's, there through it all workhorse sort of, he's you know, a legend get, you always know you're gonna get good performance sort of kyle most of the time sometimes he, he gets cooked this guy, I, th I, I saw yeah, him well, aging, aging this year he was getting cooked sometimes by some wingers i remember so, he's still i remember solid, him trying to player. on the 1v1 trying to pull an angulo Sometimes yeah. you know, trying to do or the little, gets too little high up the field, like in the final, the little shimmy, shimmy, yeah, you know, and it would work sometimes because <laughs> the other player didn't expect this guy to do it, but uh, some other times he lost the ball pretty easy. I do have to say, but I, I commend that he tries at least, right? I mean, I'll say this: so the last three seasons, I'd be like, surely this is the last of Kyle Smith, right. and <laughs> he's still here every year, so. As much as I'm like Kyle, I think we're we're good. You can move on now. I I still think he'll probably be here. No, if I, you know if Oscar's renewed and he's like, hey, I like this guy. He's a good, useful backup option. He's you know cheap and we can keep around. He's American. It's hard to say no to that. You know, I think I think if we does keep him around, we expect him to play even less games next year. I think we need it right back, right? He, he can be our third option right back. Yes. I think you should have first team right back, Mikey, and then Kyle Smith, who can be your third string option on the left or the right or whatever you want. But he's a good squad filler that I would bring back for that reason. But also, 
if we're trying to promote guys from the youth, then there's an argument to say not to bring Kyle Smith back and to, to let him Freeman. go and to move on and bring, bring forward Freeman. But I think two things. One, I don't want to really play dagger down at right back this season. I think he's he's fine there, but he's he's wasted. I think he's better as a sub in an attacking role somewhere for us. And then we need a first team right back. Mikey didn't work out like we were planning um, this season. So if that's the case, then yeah, keep Kyle as another option on, on, on a third string, but it could also be his last year. It's hard to tell. I think if Oscar's here, it definitely ups his chances of being here next year. If Oscar's gone, I think whoever's coming in is going to say, I think it's I, like I a 50, 50, John. You um, think? I, I think so. I think so. And I don't, I don't know. I think it, even if Oscar is staying, I think this is the last time that we're going to see Kyle Smith. I don't know. I think it will speak volumes about how we're trying to grow the squad for real mm -hmm. if we let Kyle go. I think it's sort of one of those like safety blankets of like, we just have this guy here. Better be good. safe than sorry. Right. Like he's a good squad filler. But like, if we really want to up the level of your squad, you've got to raise the floor and much as I love I'd Kyle, rather, he's on I'd the rather floor stay. of the squad. Like he's down there I, at the bottom end of the squad. So if you raise those guys, you raise the whole quality. I'd rather stay with uh, Petrazo, and I know that Petrazo is a left back, but he can also play a right, uh, right back. I mean, Petrazo's I will, got I, youth I, on his side compared to Kyle Smith. The guy is thirty-one years old now. You know. I know. Not, hey, hey, hey! What's supposed to not young on with the thirty soccer player? <laughs> <laughs> He's but, younger than me, Paula, and I'm <laughs> calling him old. Come on. <laughs> no, but I I will rather stay with Kyle than with Pedrazo. All that I'm saying. I think Oscar would rather. Know. Like we, we saw him play Kyle at left back instead of playing Pedrazo when Santos needed a break or whatever. So I think that says more likely that they'll let Pedrazo go saying we don't think you're gonna be good enough and and Kyle is a good option, you know, to fill in at left or right back. But like I said, I think it'll be a real marker for how much how how much business we're going to do this year is whether Kyle's here, you know, or not. Correct. Uh, let's read some comments here. And uh, hold on one second. I'm trying to had uh, some issues with the. Uh, with a transfer market window here my apologies there you go so um uh comments it says here that would be great to get a walker summerman or someone from europe that's right i think someone from europe i agree with i mean maybe i mean look to me walker summerman look it has everything you look for in a center back he could be a face of a team he could command the back line he's a player for the future if he really wants to be here, U.S. men's national team, like you know, always, you know, uh, I think he'd be a, I think he'd be a great pickup. But you know, I don't know if he's gonna want to leave Nashville, right? Because Nashville is his, is where he's, you know, where he loves to be, right? So you know, it'd be take some convincing and a lot of money for him to uh, put that purple on, right? Uh, in this case, we can go to like like we were saying, go to Bundesliga two. And get a top three center back there, and you know, and and make them play here in Orlando, right? So, uh, are we gonna do Mikey Holiday, Alex Freeman, Wilder, or you want to do M Mikey Holiday? Yeah, we should do Mikey. Definitely Mikey, look, I'll give him a like. Like he had some good games and stuff. Uh, I think he his injuries uh, plagued him a little bit. I'll give him a C. You know, uh, I'll give him a C. To Mikey Holiday, he had, he had a great also national team call up. Uh, I think I gave him a C. Uh, I want to see what he can do next season. You know, healthy with preseason on top of him. You know, because we're gonna need him. Because I I don't believe Dagger could play <laughs> like th like Conca champion. You know, a Concacaf Champions League. You know, or the Champions League they call it now. I think or the um, Concacaf Champ Championship or whatever. They always change their name. I don't know what they're doing. But uh, either way. Um, He's definitely going to have some minutes next season. What about you, John? Yeah, I give him a, a C plus, just because I don't think he was bad when he played. I just think he just, sadly for him, this injuries this year just set him back. 
I, I agree with John. And he also had assist this season. He had a good start, but then, unfortunately, with the injuries, it he got I mean, bench, a little so. taste of our predictions when I went back. I picked Mikey Holiday to be our defender of the year, so he did not do that. He was no. defensively of the year at the bench. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Poor guy. I mean, I really felt for him in that Seattle game. That was – he came back and then to be injured again. Those those are the worst injuries for me. When it's a hamstring, it I'm just, like, oh. Yeah, and he was really – it looked like he was – Trying to develop something on that right side with Faku for a minute there. So I'm excited with a preseason under him. Maybe we'll see a different Mikey Holiday next year. But regardless, I don't think we can rely on him as the, the first team guy. All right. Um, so we have uh, no comments so far. Uh, thank you so much. I'm about 10 people live watching us. Thank you so much okay. for your uh, support if you're listening or watching drop us a thumbs up if you're listening uh go to our youtube channel and you can watch this uh we can watch look at our faces <laughs> you can drop us a comment also um alex freeman we we did not see alex freeman no i'm not giving him a yeah i think we'll we'll and it's unfortunate uh well you know um he did have a couple of goals in ocb now wilder cartagena <laughs> To me, A+. Plus. And it's not because he's Peruvian, guys. I think he's A+, plus because of also his story, right? I mean, he came to the league um, after a botch in, in the Middle East, um, out of shape. And he came back to be not only important for Orlando City, but also important for his national team. Um, and so I think, uh, his, his game is developing tremendously. I think we have not seen the, the peak of, uh, Wilder Cartagena, what he can do. So I look forward for next, next season to, to show us, you know, you know, how, how, I mean, to be that player that, you know, you cannot sub out. Right. <laughs> so kind of like Cesar. Right, uh, you know, so Wilder to me A plus. Uh, what What are your thoughts, John? Yeah, A plus. Him and him and Jansen are the only players I gave A pluses to. I think that is very hard to to pick anything out from this year that he did particularly badly. I mean, there was a few games where he he may have gone missing, but most of the time he was running our midfield. <laughs> And killing it and that moment where we moved into the double pivot and he really came alive next to cesar was the moment the season really turned on so i think we have a, a lot to be grateful with with wilder this year and hoping that he's found a home here you know i think that's important that i think he like you said he needs to settle and it seems like he's settled this year so i'm hoping that he will you know just now become a, a key part of our our spine as it were of that midfield and the, you know through the middle of the team i think wilder could next year be as crucial as someone as like jansen was um this year just a real sort of you know we know what we're getting week in week out reliable top quality mls dm i will agree um a plus he came in clutch. He did some some important goals to the team, important assist. He was holding the fort with Araujo. So I will give him even a Mario star, like Luis says, <laughs> yeah. for me. Big, big gold star. Yeah, I mean, um, fantastic uh, season for Wilder. And I believe that um, we haven't seen the, you know, the rest of them, so... Um, so Cesar Araujo. An A. I gave him an A minus. I think there was times where he went missing this season, like in games. I think he had a better season last year, arguably, at times. And I was expecting him to grow even more this year. And he, he kind of, I don't want to say he got worse, but he didn't necessarily improve as much as I was hoping. Um, I think also the tendency to try and draw the foul is very frustrating. 
and something I just wish he would stand his ground and use his strength a little bit more. And, you know, uh, sometimes it, it is annoying, but overall the guy does incredible, incredible like work rate for us across the that midfield with Wilder and cleans up a lot of messes and just protects that back four so well. And, and did it again very well this season. Um, not not to the height that I was hoping. Like I thought he was going to be our best midfielder this year, arguably, or one off. Uh, but definitely still a very very good year. What about you, will, uh, Paul? I will give him an A. And by the stats, John, he had a better year this year than last year. Why does it not feel like that to me? I don't know. I think it's do you, just because. Do you feel like that? Is that just me being crazy, or is that? No, and and I and I. F- I feel you. I think it's just the way that he tried to flop a little bit, trying to get that fouls, and he didn't um, get it. Um, opportunities that he wasn't up front to get more opportunity of the goal. I think it it, it was that oppor- like those little those little things are the ones that we're is stuck in our heads. And he had three assists and one goal this year. So, uh, better than last year. He only got um, in the U- U.S. Open Cup goals last season. So, um, probably we see less of flopping of Araujo next season. I don't know. I um, think it's because he's playing the further forward of the two I think so too. I think he's better, like, weirdly, even a Wilder is, like, sitting more. I think it's like I preferred Cesar when he was deeper in midfield, just just mopping up like tackles and getting the ball back and being a ball winning mm-hmm. midfielder, not necessarily being as further forward of the field. So you prefer like holding holding him back? I I would almost like put them the other way, like let Wilder the other be like the flip, guy. Wilder, yeah, Wilder, let Wilder, Wilder be the one who goes there. further forward and and make Cesar stay back because I don't think Cesar is as as good going forward. And I, I find that he tends to lose the ball. I when, agree. Like more when he's fire, hot, further up the field than Wilder would. Me, and, but. and I think we saw that, that, that switch after the second season, like the second half of the season that Wilder went more up and Araujo stayed back. I think God, now that I'm remembering, because I remember I that mean, they both do it all the they, time. They but, both did it. One but... of them is, <laughs> has a little bit more license to go forward. You think, I would assume. But I agree with you, John. I will give him a, a, just a solid A. How about you, Luis? Uh, To me, uh, Cesar, I give him a B uh, because I believe uh, he, there's been times that, you know, when you got to do the double pivot, um, I mean, I know the double people was huge, but um, look, less is more, right? And I feel like uh, Oscar really rely on him this season, and uh, he's got a couple of yellows, unnecessary yellows. He's dived a couple of times and really horribly and gotten fined also uh, by the league and uh so and like he doesn't learn he just does it again. right like, that's so the annoying thing. And, it's like dude it doesn't work Stop and uh, you know, look i'm glad he didn't do it on important really important matches but in the end you know you still had some some players like like they were unstoppable for them you know like uh, carlos hill like diego rossi like Cucho hernandez like those players you really didn't see that the Cesar transforming on those games, but uh, when we play lesser competition, like maybe Houston or, or you know, um, even Inter Miami before Messi, uh, yeah, you will see him like being one of the best players on the pitch. So I want to see more consistency of Cesar Araujo uh, next season, and uh, I think him and uh, Wilder can even turn it to be even a better duo next season playing together. And I command for the squad to bring somebody like Unino also um, in the mid to to spicing th- you know spice things up in there you know uh, I th- I think uh, Unino could help out a lot there as a kind of third string help because I, I believe Felipe Martins may may be leaving hopefully so yeah we'll see 
but um yeah it's just my opinion you know um i don't know what, what, what do you guys think yeah i think i i think we've got felipe and junior we only need one of them so i think that's the argument is like i would rather have felipe junior and like a couple, couple other younger guys, like maybe promote Janino or maybe even use Dagger Dan as a defensive bid. Like, obviously, he can defend a certain amount. So, um, uh, yeah, I think it's interesting to see what they do with Wilder. Sorry, with Felipe and Urso, which they keep or if they keep both of them. You know, they're both 34 years old now. I'm not sure it benefits us to have two aging defensive mids on the roster. But arguably, Junior Urso is more of an attacking mid, so who knows? That's right. Uh, you know, uh, if you give me Juninho or if you give me Felipe and Junior Urso, I mean, that's a tough one because I don't feel like the times Junior stepped in to play with the team, he looked off. He didn't look like the same junior we saw before. It, it wasn't a plug and play situation with him. Um, sometimes I even saw Felipe do a little better than him, be honest with you. Um, but I don't know. It, it's, it's tough. Um, I don't know if both are going to be part of the team next year. Uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see. But um, that, that's our rating for that. Now, the man of the hour, Dagger Dan Thor Halson. Um, man, what can I say about this guy, man? He he's a solid A to me. Uh, I think um, the way he he started a little shaky, you know, but not being able to have a place in the team. We didn't see him start in his usual demit position, and he was very receptive to where Oscar wanted to put him, and I think that's number one thing uh the number one trade on him hey coach i just want to win i just want to play i just want to place in the squad put me wherever you want even if it's goalkeeper i'll do it so uh he did and he's right now to me an important part of our back line uh, i think dagger dan has improved tremendously uh, i think uh he can even give his national team uh if there's not a lot of good right backs um he could even maybe be looked by Iceland to to be a right back for the national team. You know, uh, I mean, I think that's a huge plus that Dagger Dad has right now. And not only that, that he's a great guy, very personable, very responsible. The way he interacts with people, you know, as a very likable guy, um, he's a tremendous player. And I think it was his year. Uh, this year was his year. And uh, despite maybe the objective was not met, which it was winning the MLS Cup or or going further. Uh, I think uh, he gave his all, and you could tell, and he adapted to what Oscar wanted him to do, and I commend him for that, and that's why he gets an A for me. I don't know. What do you think, John? He's your boy right there. <laughs> my boy. My boy, Dagger. Uh, yeah, I mean, you nailed it. He's, he's a team player. He's a great guy. I think he, he was willing to do whatever he wanted to do. I can't there's nothing else that i had to add really on my guy i mean he's he's awesome i think next year like i said i want to see him somewhere else on the pitch i i think he's the ultimate sort of super sub utilitarian play him at attacking mid play him you know d mid have him on the bench bring him on wherever you want to like i think he holds the ball pretty well i think he's a good sort of like instead of having a winger like that might lose the ball you bring on dagger down as a guy as a winger that's going to hold the ball um i think he could become sort of like a like a jack Grealish type on that wing you know not necessarily all about pace but just got the the uh, the ability to play in the right guys and be a playmaker from the from the wing almost um that could be something we see from him or maybe you want to train him into being a more aggressive defensive mid you know like with the double pivot next season you bring off Tezara Wilder at a certain point, and you bring on Dagger, and you let Dagger be the guy who goes forward from the demon position. I think he he's shown that he can join the attack from the defense very well. 
Uh, and I think that's, I want to see him have a different role next year than sort of just fill any job. I would like Oscar to pick something for him instead of just having him as a catch-all. Uh, I fear if he's a catch-all forever, he might never become a real player for us in a certain position or be able to compete for a starting position ever if we don't know, you know, what we want him to be. His versatility is great, but it might become his downfall. So hopefully next year we see him in a different position and uh, that becomes his his regular position. We don't know. He is to be molded, right? That's how I see him. I will give him a A. Ooh. Oh, I didn't even say it what I gave him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you didn't you give said. him a rating. I just oh, you did it? About you Dagger, said how much a. I loved him. Did go, I? go, go, John. Yeah, I mean, I gave him an A. I gave him an A. I will give him an A. It's not easy to adapt to a position that is not naturally the one that you play back home. Going into a new country, Andy's going to a new Spanish. team. What was that, John? And learning, learning Spanish. Spanish, right? He's and he like learned, yeah. different to what we were talking about. AC still doesn't know stuff, and Pedro doesn't like. Dagger Dan came in and immediately started learning Spanish. Yeah, he's like, okay, what what do I need to learn? What do I need to do to adapt as as much as I can? Like that mentality makes a huge difference to be a team team member. Like if all of the team members will have the mentality of Dagger Dan, it will be a super Av Avenger squad. I don't know. Um. But I agree with you, John. I agree that um, I want him to see him full speed on his natural position because if he didn't play it in his position and he played well, imagine in his position. Get what I'm saying? So I would love to have another right back, a new right back for the team, a starter one, and have Dagger Dan play his position and probably we will see him score more goals for us because he has a great foot to the net and have better assist. He had assists. He had goals, even though that he was, what, right back at the half of the season or less than half of the season? He just became in August. So, I mean, A for the dude. And with his mentality, we need more players like him. Yeah, I mean, Dagger Dan, uh, and, you know, what can I say about Dagger Dan, right? I mean, phenomenal player. Let's read some uh, comments. Brady Myers, 04. My favorite part of Dagger Dan is that him and Faku play all on the same wing all season and both have no weak foot. Yeah, kind of like uh, your throw, your your quarterback throw, too. Or your, uh, <laughs> right? Is this... Faku refuses yeah. to use his right and Dagger Dan refuses to use his left. They offset each other. That's right. And I'm sure you're uh you can use both both hands to throw your 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 touchdowns. But like this. Right? So <laughs> just checking. Is that sarcasm, Brady? Yeah, it was sarcasm. Great job, Brady. Uh let's see. Let's keep up. Let's keep Urso, says Joshua Tall. I agree. JCB's Cartagena has improved a lot this season. His double pivot was crucial. Yep. Cartagena A plus JCB's 95. Right. Um, let's see one. Uh, you know, I think Dagger it, it was an important part of our back line. I, I, I keep I keep saying that. Now let's go to Junior Urso the Bear. Uh, we we barely saw what the bear was two seasons ago. This season. So you know, to me, I mean, if I could give him a D, I give him a D. You know, but honestly, um, yeah, a C minus, man. Was... I think he just saw sort of didn't he lost do the ball much in of position anything. all the time. He was losing the ball. Yeah, I think. Did he forget? I think him and Felipe didn't do much. But I think Felipe is a better re-sign. Really? Yeah. yeah. I think Junior... Look. 
they might have just picked him up for six months to say we need cover in that position. Junior's around. We know him. He's an easy fit in the squad. With no, you know, I I'm not sure they intended to keep him after that. And I think if they did, they would have wanted to see more from what they've seen, right? Like Felipe is a locker room guy. He's, you know, I think he's bringing a little bit more to the table, more MLS experience, et cetera, than, than perhaps junior is at this point. But I don't know. Like I said, you've got two, you a very confident? similar player in the squad there. Whether you need both of them, I would argue you don't. Look. Uh, Which one before goes? Going to Paula, I I, I mean, before going to Paula, I feel that with Junior, you could bring – he could play different positions. And I think this season he was just like, okay, you're back. Okay, here you go. Play. And I think he might have forgotten tactically – how to position himself and you know i i don't know if it was here uh, all there uh, you know it just seems to me that he was just very sloppy i don't know what are your thoughts there paula i i agree i agree um as well so i don't know that that uh, i'm thinking about your comment john like should well, we maybe keep... we'll get two new backup infielders, and you won't see yeah. Junior or Felipe. Like or in an either. ideal world, no offense, but I wouldn't really want either of them back next year. I don't think they contributed enough. I think when you don't have Wilder and Cesar, it's a big drop off to either of them. Yeah, no, and I agree. Like I was expecting Junior Urso from 2022, um, and not. For from this year, he was just lo lost. It was not the same Urso that we we used to see. So, so yeah, I will I will say Junior Urso, not a D. I'm gonna be nicer. A C, a C, a C. I'm gonna say a C. I gave I gave him a a D. C minus. A C minus. Who? I'm gonna be nice. Junior. C minus. Yeah, I mean, I would have given him a D. You know. All right. What about Felipe? Look, philanthrop. What is it called? <laughs> That's not philanthropist. Um, the the butcher. Nice guy, you know. You king know, of social media. I mean, that, social that media. For social me. media. I, like, king. I gave you. I gave you a C plus instead of a C minus because of your social media skills. Yeah, I think I think I'll give him a. I mean, honestly, but we thought. I, I mean, look, I don't like want to be cruel. I mean, I don't, I don't, from Austin, and he was not that. I mean, I don't want to be cruel. I mean, it's just. I mean, I, I, I want to keep it real. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, none I of haven't really seen anything personal. that has. You know, at least with Urso, I have the moments he had before, and I know that if he has one really good preseason with with Pareja, Pareja can take him and. And put him as a 10, put him as a winger, put him as a D mid, D mid. You know, Urso gives me that with, with Felipe. I think if you can get Junior back to that, I right, agree. Right. But I would argue that maybe you can't right. get back to that. It right. might be too far gone now, for can both Felipe of them. do that. No, either he's like one, I'm he's saying, one I'm not sure. right? I think we might okay. have two guys there that are on the decline and not gonna be able to get it back. Did you say he's one dimensional? Who? Felipe. I think they're both pretty one-dimensional. <laughs> I think Felipe definitely. Felipe is just a, a D-mid who can scrap and try and we need the ball back and lay it off. That's, that's all Felipe is there for. But I agree that like I feel more, we should put I feel we should put a young guy more as range a third, as a third option. I would love that, yeah. So I mean, we'll I see. think that's if I'm pareja, I, I understand he loves Felipe. I know what he's done with the community. I think that's fantastic. You know, I think that's great. And I like Urso as you know what he did before all the moments that he had with Orlando City. But I mean, if we're really here complaining about OCB not having a lot of shine in the first team, you know, I, I think that spot to me is for an OCB player. Like, I mean. I would keep Felipe if we're gonna train him up to be a coach for us, like you know. Yeah, I mean, for that, I would he could be, he could to be a, motivational speaker. Yeah, an OCB right. coach or academy coach in the future, you know. Like, I'm happy to, 
I would like to keep him in the club is what I'm saying. I think he's a great guy and I think he's a good guy. And if this is where he's going to end his career, then let's find a role for him. Maybe he's not going to be a player, but that doesn't mean that he has to stop being involved with the club. There you go. Yeah. I mean, he, he could definitely be ambassador and things like that and, and help out with the foundation and do a bunch of stuff. I think he's, he's a great guy. He's, I like, I mean, I just haven't seen him. I mean, Orlando's Orlando's plays so great. We've not been able to rely, you know, rely on him too much, right? So, um, again, I feel like Martins and Urso are players that could maybe play US Open Cup if they stay. I mean, I highly, I mean, honestly, I don't know if they're going to be staying for next season, but. If you give me an option, this is just my own personal opinion. No, no personal attack on no one or anything like that. I do want to say that if you give me, if I'm the coach, if I'm in Oscar Pereja's shoes and you give me an option to keep one of them, I'll keep Junior. The reason is because I know that if I put him in shape, I know that if I set his mind straight, uh, I know what he can provide for me. And I know that those moments may come. Um, that's just me. Uh, the 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 different uh, play, uh, positions he could play, you know, uh, I, that that would help a lot. When essentially we're playing, uh, you know, some tournaments and we have a lot of uh, injuries, right? I mean, that can definitely help um, a little bit. Now, um, Mauricio Pereira, Mauricio Pereira um, set to leave. Hope uh, Orlando City, according to or not really, I don't know. Um, all I know is this: uh, when 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 I saw him the day of the game uh, against Columbus, uh, he looked like he cried. Uh, that's just my own personal assessment of the situation. Um, he looked a little little sad uh, talking to media uh, uh, more than usual, and uh, he didn't look like he was gonna. Yeah, he didn't seem like a player that, based on my experience, that he was going to just say, "Hey, I'm I'm here next season, uh, and we should be good guys, right?" Um, so, shit. Um, he there's rumors of him in Uruguay um, going to Nacional, which is one of the biggest teams in Uruguay. There, um, and um, also there's been talks about Peñarol wanting him also, which is Facu's old, former team, uh, but they already denied those rumors. Uh, Nacional already said uh, in that they don't have the way to offer a salary like the MLS. They can compete uh, with other teams. Uh, if he wants to come, he's going to have to definitely readjust his salary uh, tremendously. So he'll go to Uruguay just to play for club and for his boyhood dream, my plus not to make the same amount of money he did here in the MLS. So that's something to definitely put in the in the scale. So I mean this, you know, so to me, I'll give him a solid solid B. Uh I think his leadership this season was better uh with a locker room. I, I feel like he's again very present with media. Um, sometimes his playability has not been the best, um, when it comes to, he hold the ball up too much. He passed, passing the ball back, uh, losing the ball in transitions a, a couple of times. Um, but then there's, he's, he had games that he's one of the best players in the, in, in the team, right. Um, uh, you know, getting the ball back, he had, um, not a lot of goals, right. Not a lot of goals, uh, but. His job is to assist, right? So, um, I don't know. What are your thoughts? I give him a solid B, John. Oh, you're muted. Are you still on Mauricio, right? Yeah, Mauricio. Yeah. Um, I think for Mauricio, I gave him a B minus. Okay. I think just there was very few games where he was the 10 we needed him to be this season. I was worried about Oscar relying on him more than like, like I, the fact that they bought his contract down preseason said to me that they were going to, you know, play him less. And we ended up playing him just as much as we did last year, still relying on him to be a 10 that he wasn't last year. And he showed even less of this year. So 
I love the guy. I think he has incredible moments for the club. Arguably one of our best, you know, center attacking mids ever to play for us up there with Kaká and other guys who played that role. Um, but he just really showed this year that he's off the pace. And in that, like, that game against Columbus was like, hey, look, this is Luciano Acosta and this is Mauricio Pereira. And right next to each other, you could see that he's miles away from those guys. He's still a very, he's a good 10 in MLS, but he's not a, he's not a scoring 10. He's not a, you know, win you a game 10. And at times in this season, I think he he hindered us because often we have to go through him and he was so slow or he was just not making the passes or we just used him as that central link. And if he's not doing his job, the whole system doesn't work. So when you play a 4-2-3-1, that central attacking mid in that role is so pivotal that they have to be one of your star players. And Mauricio this year just, didn't look like one of our star players. In fact, he looked like one of the guys that was, you know, in my opinion, should be subbed every game. And the games we we did sub him out and we had a bit more rest, he looked a little better. But overall, a lot of games, he did not look like the player we need him to be. Uh, great guy, but I think it's time for him to move on. I think if he comes back next season, he's got to play very, very fast a lot less minutes than he did this year. Really, like, he should be a, a squad player at max kind of next year if he comes back. We can't be hanging our hat on Mauricio again. Yeah. What about you, uh, Paula? Uh, I agree with John. I will go with uh, B- minus as well. Um, he only had four assists this year. So you can see probably he's me he I mean, wasn't mentally. 10, that's really not that's, good. That's, that's not bad. good. And I've been saying this since Honestly, last that's really bad. Since last season. Like we need a we need a 10, a true 10. We don't have that. We don't have a Lucho Acosta. We don't have a Diego Rossi. They they score over the weekend what Mauricio Pereira did in the last game. So well, it's not that um it, he's a good player, but not for a for a number ten, right? And I think he was mentally checked out as well. So you're right? saying he's not a championship level ten? He's not. A, we're a so, Champions Cup team now, right? Right. right. I know. I know. Champions Cup ten. I know. I know. He's a. He's a <clears throat> if I was Charlotte, I would go out and try and find Mauricio. I think he, uh -huh. he's the guy to get you off the floor of MLS to get you a mid table on the last side, or maybe he was, but he's not the guy that win you a league. Not anymore. No. Maybe, maybe a few years ago, but maybe he, in 2019, he was when never the fastest, the most agile player anyway, Luis. And now he's 32. I mean, he really seems to be slowing down and 33 now, even sorry. I think it's, I think the right. writing's on the wall and he needs to find himself a, a home back in Uruguay, which he's earned. The guy has been, he played in Russia. He played, I have to look at his career, but um, he's played a, a lot. He's in Europe, North America, you know, obviously started out in Uruguay. It's, it's time for him to go back. It's what a player of his career deserves to be able to do. And he's probably going to have to take a pay cut to do that, Luis, but I'm sure he's okay to do that. Yeah, I mean, um I see Mauricio more as a sub, in my opinion. <laughs> it's, it's just um, like I will keep him if I know we're getting someone in the caliber. And again, Orlando is the team that spent the least in the league. And look how far they've gotten. You cannot compare this to LA. You cannot compare this to Seattle. You can't compare to Portland. You can't compare this to Columbus or Washington or even New England. Orlando is a tiny little town in Florida, and with the least amount of money, they've made the best. Uh, you know, number two, uh, right below Cincinnati. So, um, look, Mauricio, I think he's reached his peak, in my opinion. Um, I think uh, we need to see him play 35 minutes tops, you know, um, 
to be that change of pace assistance player, you know, um, not flashy, but, you know, you already have a workhorse that has done all the job that he should have done. Right. And he just comes to finish it off. That, you know, type of deal. If it's, if it's that case, I will keep him. you know, uh, but we need to find somebody like Carlos Hill. We need to find somebody like Lu Luciano Acosta, even though I'll be honest with you, Luciano Acosta in, in South America, not impressive at all. Uh, and he really developed in the MLS. Somebody like Thiago Almada, right? Somebody like, you know, Carlos Hill to me also in Europe, Carlos Hill, like, has anybody heard about Carlos Hill in, in Spain? Uh, you know, right? So we need to find those type of players. Um, Orlando can do it. They just need to spend a little more this year, you know, uh, and, and being able to, to afford that, you know, um, um, other than that, uh, I think we've seen some of the last games from Mauricio Pereira, according to to sources uh, from Uruguay. He seems that like he's wanting to go back home, and uh, you know he wants to play the rest of his career there. Thirty three years old, he has a couple of more years left, you know, um, and he wants to you know go back to Uruguay. I mean, if, if that's the case, then good for him. You know, I think he's done. He's part of history. He's another case of forever a lion, right? So when Orlando City in 50, in 10 years plays uh, Orlando City uh, stars of the past game, you know, French, you know, friendly game for the for the foundation against maybe the stars of, you know, LA Galaxy or something like that, you know, former stars. Mauricio is definitely going to be part of the team, right? Because he's been such an important part of Orlando. Um you know, but other than that, that, that's that's what I would say about him uh, regarding that. So, uh, let's read some comments real quick. Uh, it says, um, Jose Lopez Hernandez, how you doing, Josue? How you doing, my friend? He he's uh, he covers LAFC. What do you think about a potential fourth DP spot? We only have two in our MLS Cup finalists. There you go, John. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean. I think it's Messi has arrived in the league. There's right. attracting better players. You would hope this this window we should see you know a higher level of players join the league than before. You'd hope. Um, in which case, another DP spot helps that. I would go further. I think MLS is sort of like they're like gently letting the lead out. You know, I think we need to kind of let it go a little bit more at the moment and I was argument to say that perhaps we don't need DPs anymore and we don't need a lot of these mechanics that were there from the early days of MLS and I, I'm all for parity and I think that we should keep the league even and I think you can do that in certain ways um, but also the league has shown that it doesn't always play by the rules right like I, I think Miami already know about this fourth DP spot like what are they doing that you know, there seems to be roster building rules that they're going by that everybody else is not. Um, I agree we need to open it up and we should have another DP. I think that we showed this year, like what Jose is talking about, that you don't necessarily need DPs in order to do really well if you have a well-built roster. But overall, it could only be good um, to have more high-wage players coming into the league. You know, uh, and for us, I think there would be if we could buy down Ojeda, potentially you're looking at three DPs, uh, you know, to bring in if they if they up it to four. So it could be a big window for us. Yeah, um, Mauricio, definitely an important part of the team. Uh, but, you know, I feel like I don't know if next season we're going to see, you know, the best of him. You know, I think we've seen the. I think we've already seen the best of them already in, in Orlando City. Uh, it says, uh, we also should keep Angulo, in my opinion, says Joshua Tall. What are your thoughts uh, regarding that, Paola? He's an important piece, and I think he could be uh, developed, right? He has speed. He still needs development on the finishing, but I will keep him. Um, he was here as a substitute, and he won the starting lineup so i definitely a key piece uh for this team i will keep him as well all right all right so we're going to to the last few uh 
players here. Um, Martin Ojeda. Um, look, I, I'll give him a, honestly, I'll give him a C. Uh, I don't think I've seen the the full-blown uh, of what he can do. Uh, I've not seen what he did in Godoy Cruz. Uh, I have not seen what, what he what he did in, in Argentina. I know that it's two different leagues, but, I mean, he's had chances to to grab the brass ring and, and shine, and he has not done that, in my opinion. Um, if he cannot do that in a small market like Orlando, he cannot do it in a bigger market. So... Um, now we have, he has to stay in the team. So he's 25 years old. Uh, I'm hoping and praying that, uh, he'd be able to be that player uh, next season, maybe with some departures, right? He could be one of the, one of the people we rely on, uh, and be a, 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 a possible starter, you know, who knows? Uh, but again, he he is he's not a franchise player. He's not a player that you're gonna. Hey, he's minute eighty five. Martin Ojeda has the ball. Oh, it's a sure goal. Oh man, he's definitely gonna do a play. You know, he he ain't that guy, and he's not he's not been that guy in Argentina either. I mean, he comes from a small little club in Argentina, Godoy Cruz. Um, barely makes it to the playoffs in Argentina. Always is in relegation. So trying to escape relegation in Argentina. So, um, you know, he still have a lot to prove. I give him a solid C. I don't know. What are your thoughts there, John? And he's a DP, $6.5 million. No, euros, euros. Uh, yeah, I think, I think, I think the C is really harsh on Martin. I think that he did pretty well with the amount of minutes that he was given. Um, if you sort our team sort of by like XG per 90, he, he's up there with Cara and Angulo and Maguire, like with Faku and Enrique. I think for the amount of minutes that, you know, he had, he showed that he can, he can produce. Um, I think, you know, six goals, seven assists is not bad for your opening season. I agree. Like, you know, he was putting up 20 something goals in, he, he didn't become the player that we wanted him to be. But I also think that that first year is a lot of adjustment. I think there's a lot of, you know, uh, figuring stuff out and growing into the league. I think that he, I don't think he did badly. Um, I think it was a problem that he never really claimed a place. So I, I gave him a B. because so I kind of said, you did some things good, but really, you know, wasn't the player that we were hoping was going to be like, he's not the star we thought he was, but I'm hoping next year that he can find a place in the starting 11 that works for him. Maybe he's our new 10, you know, I don't think he's the fastest winger. So I don't love him playing as a winger. And I think he, the, he suffered this year from the fact that he does play exactly the same position as Faku. Like he, they both want to be on the right wing, cutting in our left foot. So, yeah, but I'm not giving up on Martin. I think okay starting year, hoping for improvement next year. What about you, Paola? I agree, solid B for me. Um, he still made some assists on the games, some goals. I don't think um, that he's the player that we were expecting to be, like John said, but. Um, Hopefully next year is a breaking point on his career and he chines and he's a slow runner. So I don't like him in the wing neither, John. So uh, I, I would love to see Ramiro Enrique. Like I know that we haven't um, talked to it to about him yet, but I would love to see Ramiro Enrique in the wing or more about Gaston Gonzalez too in the wing as well. But for me, Ojeda is not a, is not a winger. Um, I agree. With John, he clashed a lot in the beginning when he was starting with Faku because Faku plays on his exact same position. So let's see what happens um, next year. Hopefully he will be um, that player that we signed and gets better. I don't know. So let's see. If he could do a lot of assists coming from the bench, he could be a, 
uh, definitely uh, our number 10 for next season. Who knows? Yeah, he needs to be that player I saw in Godoy Cruz two seasons ago. A player that would rally his team, that it's like, come on, guys, like I'm going to shoot it from, from a distance. He scores so many goals shooting from distance. Like, we need to see him do that more. Undoubtedly, a, a player with, that is young with a lot of talent. That's why he 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 cost uh, 6.5 million euros um, because he's not just an average player. But I think we've seen a very average, in my opinion, year for him. Um, and, you know, again, you know, we spent the least from any other MLS club out there. So, um now we'll go for Gaston Gonzalez, um, another player that was played with injuries. We didn't see much of him. I mean, I don't know if we should even rate him. You know, I, I <laughs> do you guys have a rating for him? Because I mean, I have a minus C. I give him, a, I, give, I give him a C, you know, C minus, right? I mean, I don't, I haven't seen, I mean. Again, you know, another player that I saw in the Argentinian league that uh, when he when he was rumored to come to Orlando, I freaked out because I know a lot of South American teams wanted him. Uh, some teams in Brazil, some teams in Argentina, some even teams in Peru uh, wanted him. And um, you know, when I heard Orlando City, I said, "Hell, hell yeah!" You know, this guy is a uh, him and Faku, him in one wing, Faku in another wing. You know, that's it. You know, this is our you know, this is going to be a one-two punch, and it did not work the way he wanted to. Um, hopefully, again, you know, he he's able to come back to the form that he used to have. He's only 22 years old, but um, I don't know. I give, him a, I, I give him a C. What about you, John? Uh, I gave him an F. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the guy played 720 mm -hmm. minutes. Yeah, there you go. I, I, just, I think we missed on that one, but I gotta yeah. say, or just he's just so plagued by injuries. I, I think cut our losses on Gaston. I gotta say, I, and when he does play, I didn't see anything that gives me indication. Like anything. he's not, he's not that agile. Of yeah, I agree with you on that. Try to I use him as a striker. I just, I just didn't want to anything. be. I, I just didn't want to be the harsh one. You know. What I, mean? I, I sometimes you just gotta say like, look, this guy's doing nothing for us. He isn't. There's nothing. He's not providing anything for us. And yeah. we put in, we spent money to buy him. We've been well, treating him for two well, years. You just got to cut your losses. That's, <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a stinker, I think, from Luis and Ricardo. It's got to be said. I think even, even if he was fit, I'm not sure I ever saw the player that we're supposedly supposed to have. And I know, I know you guys like him. I just, I don't know. Paulo, you like him. I know. I just I think I never it's injury. Saw it. I never I think... saw it though, even when he wasn't injured. No, no, like I think his injury mentally like played games, right? I I did see him not on his peak, but getting there, and then boom, the Miami game. Oh injury. yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, he was he was coming back, and then yeah. he was coming back little by little, and then unfortunately, injury started again. And then okay, I'm 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 fit again. <laughs> Boom, another injury. So I think <clears throat> he has a curse. Someone put a curse on him, unfortunately. So hopefully for next season, he's not he's not <clears throat> injured and he can like outgrown from that because i know that he mentally suffer from those injuries so i mean i feel bad for the guy i do it's just after two years he's we barely see him play on the pitch you know that's true it, i agree it doesn't with that. give me yep. much faith for the year three that we're gonna he's gonna be healthy enough to make a a difference in the squad maybe he will maybe i'm wrong but if it were me i would i would cut my losses mm. Well, uh, to me, one of the best players in the in the team. I call him Vinny Junior, Mini Vinny, Mini Vinny. He plays like Vinicius Junior on the wing. He does everything Vinny does, but then he just shoots like Ivan Angulo. I'm just gonna say it like that, right? <laughs> um, 
Ivan Angulo, what a player, what a story too, coming from Palmeiras, a huge team in Brazil, but being like in the third team, like not even in the second team, being loaned out everywhere, being benched in everywhere he's been, comes to Orlando City. Oscar Pereja sits with him, says, hey, I'm going to give you your minutes. You need to be yourself. You need to prove what you can do. Uh, the team embraces him, and he explodes. One of the best players in the team, in my opinion. A, to me, Mario Star. To me, that's like A++++ to the moon. Great player. Um, one of the best players in the team, in my opinion. I think... One of the players that carried the ball the most in attack, probably more than Facundo Torres uh, throughout the whole year. And Facundo Torres cost 14 million euros. So he cost 1.5 million. <laughs> compare, the, compare those numbers right there. So definitely somebody that's going to be uh, part of, the, uh, of next year's team. And I'm just excited uh, to see even more of Ivan Gangulo next year. Why about you, uh, John? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I definitely show a lot of growth. Um, frustrating at times when he, he doesn't lift his head up and yeah. make the right pass or finish the goal. Uh, for that reason, I gave him an, an A- minus because I think he he does so much defensively that goes unseen sometimes. And, yeah, agree. Uh, you know, he, he just kept running. The amount of minutes he played this season, and he just never tires, like, I think his work rate is incredible. I think that he is a guy that is a good squad player, but not necessarily somebody we should. If we want to be a top, top team in the league, I don't think we should be relying on Angulo to play as much as he did this year. I would like to see someone else kind of claim that left wing position um, and use Angulo off the bench because I think him coming off the bench is an incredible asset i think that pace is destructive to tired defenders when he plays from the start of the game it is effective but i think it's much more effective to bring him off the bench with raw pace to run at fullbacks when they're tired for 20 minutes and the guy can can cause real problem he he's a uh, he's on the counter attack kind of defender i mean sorry attacker right like we need he needs the space in front of him to run into He's not very good at creating the space. So I feel that often he's not able to join in the attack the way that perhaps some of the other players are. And he's not as good with his passing or as smooth um, as perhaps some of the other players are around him. And therefore, the style that we like to attack in doesn't always suit Angulo. But as soon as there's like a counterattack, he's the guy that leads it. So... I believe he's better off the bench for that reason. But overall, a very good, very good season for him. So, A minus. I will say, what are you, Paola? I will say A, because Ivan Angulo, who would have thought he was the player that came here and claimed the left winger position? Like, everybody was like, who's this player? Who's this player? Um, he's the king of 1v1. But like John said, I would like to see another different player take that throne um, and bring Ivan Angulo from and seal the deal after the attacking third. So um, for me, it's an A. Not an A minus, just an A. Okay. Um, we go to Facundo Torres, our DP, our star, uh, the star of the team, the main protagonist of what we call Orlando City SC, 14 million euros, um, around $13 million. Um, I'm going to say uh, one of the leading goal, goal scorers in the team, definitely the goal scorer of the league, uh, well, of the team. Look, um, I give him an A, you know. An a, you know, an a, a solid A, um, not minus, not plus. I think he's – there's a lot of rumors of him saying that he wants to go, that he wants – look, no one doubts that he's a great player, right? 
no one doubts that he's a phenomenal player, a great, a great dad, you know, great, great person. But he, in my opinion, he, you know, I think he'll be making a huge mistake if he tries to leave um, the MLS. Um, he's not ready. I mean, unless he's going to go play in a small team in Europe that it's not going to win absolutely anything like conference league level team conference league you know um then all right you know um if that's what he wants to do he feels like that's going to be better than Orlando City cool i feel one more season with Orlando City see how far Orlando City can take this if they can replicate this or even achieve a little higher maybe win it all and then i could say he could be um heavily seeked by other clubs but again um orlando it's it's not a uh it's okay orlando it's not a a big market so you know i don't know i gave him a solid a what about you john yeah hey i agree i think uh very good season sometimes one dimensional yeah. uh you know like we talked about on the right wing cuts in on the left foot at times it was a bit too predictable but overall you know the leader of our team the star guy i i wish he could do a little bit more sometimes to to grab our team you know and and be that like you said Luis, put the big turtle shell on be the star guy for us right. um sometimes he's lacking that ability to be that top top level player for us um that's the only minus i have on faku and i think that if he's here next year he's gonna be an even more you know integral part of our team uh if if not then you know we wish him luck in, in europe or wherever he's off to next but i believe he'll probably be here um until the summer maybe in the summer he'll go but we'll see yeah i agree with you on that um you know uh, I mean, he's. I mean, will he be forever a lion? I I don't know. I mean, if he leaves, you know. Again, he, he has not made the impact. Maybe Nani made. You know what I mean? But then again, Nani won everything. You know, Nani won. Uh, you know, Champions League. He's. You know, he's played Euro. He's won a Euro. So I mean, I, again. Uh, Paola, what are your thoughts uh, regarding uh, Facundo Torres? I will get. I will give him um, an A. Um, I don't think, and I heard rumors too that he will be leaving for Europe. But honestly, I don't. I don't think until the summer as well. Like John said, I think he would have been en route to Europe if he would have scored that opportunity against Columbus. He would had more probability, but at the same time, he still needs to develop uh, more things before going to Europe. If he doesn't want to be a bench warmer over there overseas, that's the reality. So, I will give him a, a an A. An A. Okay. All right. I think right. Arsenal will not be calling this this window. I think he needs to raise his stock again a bit before the summer and then yeah. look for that European move. You know, I think what's best for him is go when your stock is high. I think his stock was high mid mid season last this year, and it will be again, I believe, mid season twenty four, and that's when the that's when he should go to Europe. I I agree. He'll get more agree. money in the summer too and a better deal. I agree. I think I think he's gonna have to I mean, only scoring. I mean, it's just we've not seen that it factor for him to be a DP. It's just my opinion, you know. I just, uh, I don't know. It's just me. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, Paul, I know you got to go. So um, totally understand. There you go. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I left my grades, John. You got me covered. Thank you so much. Have, have a good night, out. everybody. Right. So we have a couple of more players, and then I also got to go. Um, we got so, Enrique, and Duncan, and Jack left. So Ramiro Enrique, uh, I'll give him a, I'll give him a, a C. You know, I think we need, we need to a see C. more of him. 
Yeah, I think we need to you see. Not more. impressed by these Argentinians this year, man. No, not really. Honestly, I mean, I mean that's fair. I think there was times when Ramiro was average. I gave him a B plus. Yeah, I, I mean, think I, he. I think he had moments where he looked like a really great player, and like I, I just he didn't get to play a lot, you know. Paula gave him a B. As well, I think he did okay with the time he had. It would be interesting to see if he gets more time next season. Like, would you be feel comfortable starting Ramiro Enrique as the left winger? I I I would quite like to see him be a like, left wing role more often. Yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah, Ramiro to me needs to. Uh, we haven't seen. I mean, we don't know if I, I don't know if he's a striker, if it's a right winger, if he, if he could play the ten, you know. And then obviously, I feel like you know, as a striker, he's being overshadowed by all these big center backs. So uh, he 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 cannot come out of that. In, uh, in I don't think we can use him as a striker. Right. Right. I think he's a he's a winger. He's an inside forward, right? He's a winger. He wants to cut in on his right foot and shoot from the left wing. I think makes the most sense for him. All right, Duncan McGuire, Big Dunk, the heart, the Holland of the Heartland. Whew. I mean, with, was it going to be anything else than a, I didn't give him an A plus. I resisted the urge. I just gave him an A. I think you know, incredible first season. It's it's hard to come in and do as well as you did in your first year. And also for us to kind of then feel comfortable enough to let Kara go and be like, you're the guy and let him, you know, ride out the rest of the season as our main striker, essentially. And it says everything you need to know about Duncan's performance. And hopefully he grows on this. There's rumors of Europe already, but it's too soon, Luis. It's too soon for the guy. So Duncan will be here. I'm pretty sure of that. And Hopefully, uh, I don't know if he'll be our starting guy. Maybe we'll bring in a, a DP striker, but he's uh, he's definitely going to be coming off the bench, if not every game, I'm sure, and be starting a lot of minutes next season. And and be, I think he'll probably score even more goals. I reckon 15 goals or so more next for Duncan next year, and uh, an A season for him for sure. Paula gave him an A as well. So, what's your score for Duncan, Luis? Um, my score for Duncan McGuire will be an A plus. I mean, I think what he's oh. done. Uh, my score, my score for Duncan will be an A plus. I think what he's done, it's been tremendous. I think uh, it's been uh, you know quite quite amazing. Um, as a you know coming from the the collegiate, you know, not not a big college either, right? Uh, and excelling at this level, it's been tremendous for Duncan. Uh, I, I can't wait to see him next season, uh, how he's going to thrive even more and make, become an even a bigger part of what he's already – or what he already is for the club. You know, I, I, I look forward to that. And I, I I just like you, John, I agree that he cannot go to Europe. Don't be succumbed by, hey, you know, uh, this Belgian team wants you. Uh, dude, you're – baby steps man you know try to MLS is better than right. Belgian league anyway right yeah it's so... the it's the temptation of Europe and like oh that's the next thing to do but going to like a mid-level club and you know Belgium is not going to make like you might play some European <laughs> football sure but it's it's a stepping stone to then another team in Europe so it makes more sense to stay here a little bit he's only had one season of professional you know we never saw DK or Kyle go that quickly. And I don't think, sorry, DK or, um, yeah, Kyle, Laren go that quickly. And I don't think we'll see Duncan go that quickly. I think one year is, is a little bit too raw. You know, I, I, I agree with that. I think uh, he should be, um, he should definitely be careful not to succumb to the temptation of going to Europe too early. You know, I think he still need to give the MLS and also the UN's men's national team. You know, you have to understand Copa America is about to come. You know, what if you go to Belgium and then you go and you're the third striker behind some guy in Belgium? Is the U.S. men's national team going to notice you? Probably not. 
But if you are the at least the top two in Orlando City, he, the U.S. men's national team is going to definitely notice you. So um, now um, let's go with Jacqueline. You know, we we, we end with Jacqueline. Uh, to me, he deserves more time with the first team, just like uh, John said to me. I feel like I'm going to give, because he's a golden boot, I mean, nothing but an A+. Plus. I mean, you got to give the man but respect. He deserves OCB more respect. Performance A+. Plus. Just the, yeah. I think... You know, OCB performance A plus, and I gave him a, a B for his Orlando City performance as well because there are some times where he came in and looked pretty good. And, you know, like there was the one game where he came on and played like a defensive striker role for 20 minutes and held up the ball really well. And you know, we almost changed our whole play style to be like a long ball team, and Jack was able to be the guy that chested down, be that big number nine. Um, I just really want to see him get some minutes next year, Luis, to see if he can take that next step. And no one has earned it more than Jack Clint. So. Yeah. So. Final yeah. one. Um, Oscars. Great for the season. Well, to me, Oscar Pereja deserves an A. You know, um, I don't know if it's a, is an A+. Plus. Um, oh, Luis, uh, sorry. Uh, Paula gave... Duncan an A and Jacqueline a C plus, just FYI. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm with you. I give Oscar an A too. Yeah, so I give Oscar an A because he was able to, amongst all the BS that happened in the beginning of the season, uh, all the negativity, all the back and forthness with some of the fan base, uh, he was able to clear all that smoke and work and prove on the pitch that he is a top three coach in the MLS. And with, yeah, with his puppy specials, with his things, you know, with his changes in mid and 85, right? Uh, he could still, we're still, we're still right below Cincinnati. So a lot of people don't, don't realize the big feat. Now, if we let him go, uh, he'll be picked up by any other MLS team for sure. I mean, he, he can turn around a franchise and he's he's shown it with Orlando coming from the aha the specters coming from the you know <laughs> you know coming from the um you know the the old times of Orlando City where Orlando didn't even win a raffle right uh coming to being a contender for the MLS Cup um Nothing but praise for Oscar and also the way he's developed players and impacted players' life and careers. That to me has even more value. Like the Ivan Angulos, like the Rafa Santos, nobody's in South America. And sorry for me to say that word, but you know, bring him here and, and make him shine and, and you know being good starters for what he did with Dagger Dan. You know, that that is work from the coach and his staff. If you do not see that, you just have a fixation on not wanting Oscar on the team because you feel that maybe Carlo Ancelotti could maybe play in Orlando because maybe you feel that, you know, uh, Jose Mourinho could play here in Orlando. Maybe you feel like maybe, you know, uh, I don't know, Marcelo Gallardo could play in Orlando City, uh, you know, could coach in Orlando City. Orlando City won't hire those guys. <laughs> We're not that type of team. You know, so, you know, uh, we're not at that level. You cannot compare peace and carriage. You cannot compare Chelsea, Liverpool to Orlando City. It's 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 a whole different level. So uh, for I think for what we got, I think he's made the most out of it. And I think I'm very content with Oscar continuing as a coach in the MLS. Well, what about you, John? Yeah, I mean, I we talked about it before. I think we'd be silly to let him go. So hopefully just waiting for that announcement any day now you know next week get some good news the oscars re-signed and here's some more good news about which players have signed and, and you know who, who perhaps might be leaving us sadly but um the sooner we know that he's our guy and the, the, the quicker they'll be able to to build it around and i would hope Luis, that they wouldn't be deciding these players renewals without him or you know maybe they are, but that's not ideal. So you would you would hope that Oscar was the first phone call they made, and uh, that it's a done deal already. And hopefully we're just waiting to find out. 
Correct. I have a feeling that Oscar is going to stay. You know, I have a feeling that at this point, um, the negotiations, I mean, I don't think Orlando is that type of club. I mean, I've, I've met great people in Orlando. I don't think they're irresponsible like that. Um, I believe this is just a matter of waiting for communications to be given the go ahead to announce it. You know, I, I have a feeling that Oscar is going to stay with Orlando City. And, um, you know, I know other people believe that he's not the coach to take us to the next level. I mean, number one, you have to realize Orlando did not have the wallet, did not open the wallet as other clubs have. And they were able to be right below Cincinnati, make a huge run in the playoffs. You know, it didn't pan out the way we wanted to. Uh, It's okay. But, you know, we made it out there. I think, and I have full faith that with Oscar and opening up the wallet and bringing some good players, I believe and keeping the core that we have, we can definitely uh, surpass what we've did this year. Uh, And uh, I don't see any other suitable replacement. I honestly don't (laughs) No one, you know? Um, So, you know, that's to me, uh, Oscar Pereja and he's a great guy uh, outside of everything. You know, I had a had a pleasure of uh, being able to to talk to him, and he's a phenomenal human being. And you know, he's had his hand in everything within Orlando, like the youth and the academy. So, uh, nothing but 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 good things from from Mister Pareja. Um, any closing remarks? Am I forgetting something, John? Um, do you want to do predictions next next the next show? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We'll definitely do predictions next show. Yeah, we'll probably have a, a show within this week uh, to continue the predictions, more than likely, because um, it's already two hours and 14 minutes. <laughs> so um, anyways, guys, uh, I want to thank you for you guys being uh, live with us and supporting us and uh, dropping us a thumbs up and leaving your comments. Uh, Joshua Tall says, I believe Oscar will stay in OC. I agree that we can surpass what we did this season if we open the wallet. I think we just gotta open the wallet. You know, I think we have a good a good front office, a good communication staff, a good coach, uh, and I, I know the owners know that. I, I I don't see them being irresponsible like that. So, um, so I want to thank everyone uh, that has watched uh, the game today and uh, well, the show today and <laughs> another game today. And um, vamos Orlando, John. We'll see vamos you guys. Orlando. Take care, guys.